So they've got a 16 foot tall aqua dam, uh, 300 feet long, and, uh, and it's going to be going into the canal. This is the planned installation site. The far bank, of course, is across the river or channel. And this is the near bank with a berm that they've built up here to provide additional elevation to the open end of the 16 footer. So the plan is to set the 16 footer either on top of this berm or behind it, unroll it down into the water, across, and in across to the other side of the channel. Before we get across there though, we'll unroll it down into the water and then start adding water using these dual six inch pumps, which will discharge water into the fill tubes of the 16 foot tall aqua dam. The pressure of the water, or the weight of the water inside, uh, filling the unrolled section of the dam will impart a force on the rolled section of dam and make it unroll across the channel to the other bank. Okay, here's the 16 by 300 foot aqua dam. Uh, it needs two excavators to lift it, but we have one. And the other one is getting loaded across the channel onto a flatbed trailer. And then it'll drive a thousand feet to the access road. And then, all right, got the, ex the second excavator on site. And now we are hooking up to pick this dam up off the trailer. And then we're gonna track the dam using the two excavators uh, over to the installation site with the burn. The two excavators are chained to either end of the beam that the aqua dam is rolled on. They're lifting in unison, and now they picked it up off the trailer. They're going to track that way to the berm, which is in front of the trailer. The dam is unwrapped, and now uh, we've got several ropes that are tied off, uh, or they will be tied off down in front. Then the dam will unroll over the top of them, and they come back over the top to a tie-off point on the other side. This is how we will control the aqua dam's rate of unrolling once we start adding water to the unit. All right, the 16-footer has been placed on top of the berm. The uh, sorry. Richard. Excavator's coming in place to push it down the hillside. And we've got uh, one, two, three, four spools of rope that are set up for uh, to enable us to control the aqua dam's rate of unrolling across this channel as it goes. But first things first, we gotta unroll it down the hillside. Here's the start of the uh, aqua dam. You can see the white inner tubes fill tubes protruding from the open end and this is what must be tied back the outside of the open end of the aqua dam must be tied back to something so we can uh, so as we as we push on the roll to unroll it down the hillside we're, we're unrolling it and we're not just letting it slide and pull the open end down the other side of the bunk All 
Alright, now that we have unrolled the Aquadam, we are pulling back the inside tubing which was uh, folded up over itself. Now we're unfolding it. The open end of the dam is right here. But the inside tubing extends far past that. So we'll unfold it, and if it's too long, we'll have to cut it back. And then we will insert the discharge hoses from these two pumps into this dam. Start the pumps and get her going to the far bank. Okay, we're inserting the six inch hose into this fill tube. Uh, just got done with it, now they're coming out. And the hose goes all the way down to here, past the edge of this berm. That way water must flow down into the main body of the aqua dam. Six inch hose being inserted into the other fill tube of the 16 foot tall Aquadam. The inside tubing of the Aquadam is white on the inside. Alright, so we've bunched up the one fill tube here. We're working on bunching this fill tube here so that it doesn't flap around in the wind. We're just condensing all the material to a smaller volume. And the six inch hose has been inserted into each fill tube at this point, and they're hooking up the hoses to the pumps, and we're just about ready to get going. One six inch pump has been put up to idle, coming into this fill tube, and the end of the hose is just right down where that gentleman is standing. And then all the water comes in and falls down, boom, into the main body of the aquadam. And they're working on getting pump number two primed and ready to go. The 16 footer is uh, filling with water being controlled by the men at the top of the bank. And as it fills, it's unrolling. Alright, the Aquadam continues to unroll. There are four control ropes that are being held back. One, two, three, four. And they are being alternatively loosened, one set then the other, and then held back again in order to hold back the Aquadam out there, the roll, so that the main body of the Aquadam can continue to fill with water to an elevation that's higher than the existing surrounding water level. The 16 foot tall, 300 foot long aqua dam has almost reached the far bank. It's probably about 50 to 80 feet away from the far bank. Everything's going great. Two six inch pumps are pumping, pumping, and uh, everything's going great. Here we are, we're about 40, 50 feet away from the bank. Here's the rolled up Aquadam, the unrolled section of Aquadam, and there's a mark right there that says uh, 110 feet left. So we should have plenty to go up there and uh, hit the bank.
definitely getting to get past water line. All right, Mr. Excavator came in and cleared up that bank. Boom. Boom. So it's a nice bank for us to land on, and uh, we're only about 15, 20 feet away from the shore. So the dam did not get tied off fast enough. It went and reached the bank before uh, we wanted it to, so we pushed it back with the excavator to allow a flow channel around here. You can see the water is all flowing downstream towards the ocean. It's a receding tide. And the reason to do this is to minimize any load on the aqua dam until the last minute when it's as full as possible so that it can uh, be adequately prepared to hold back the load that we ask it to. The 16 footer continues to fill. We brought the one side up the bank, and this is upstream, the work area, staying full. On the other side is the tidally influenced uh, area. It's wild, and right now the tide is receding, so the water level is dropping. The 8 by 160 has been placed on top of the 16 foot aqua dam. That's the 8 footer. Now we're going to manually unroll it along the top of the 16 footer. And then once it's all the way unrolled, slide it off the edge into the water. Then we'll fill it with water. This 8 foot dam will support the 16 foot tall dam once the work area is dewatered. The 16 foot tall aqua dam is full. We've got the eight footer laid out on top of it. And uh, now we are setting up the pumps so that we can be ready so that uh, once we pull the 8-footer into the water on the far side, then we'll be ready to add water to it immediately instead of messing around with the pumps and letting the 8-footer float. So the 8 footer had to be pulled down a little bit to eat up the footage so we weren't wasting it up here. It could be usable footage down there. And the dam was floating so we just tied off to the end of it and pulled it that way. So that the open end uh, is right there at the top of the bank. It's perfect. The 8 footer is unrolled and slid into the water. And uh, now they're just putting the hoses into the open end, the fill tubes of the open end on the bank. And the next step will be filling with water.
the 16 foot tall Aquadam is fully installed. The first 8 foot tall Aquadam is about 170 feet long. <coughs> is installed. And now we are installing the last Aquadam. It's only about 80 feet long, 8 foot tall. And it's made, so it's tied back here. It's actually tied back to the 16 footer in a few places. So that as it fills it stays close to the side of the 16 footer. Just like it's uh, the first one did. Now the end here, the actual end of the aqua dam is right in here somewhere. This material is part of the connection collar. We want this gap to remain here after the 8 footers are full so that water that seeps underneath the 16 footer has a path to drain out from between the two 8 footers into the work area. We do not want this water to stay here after the work area is dewatered. If the seepage water was allowed to build up between the two aqua dams, it would push the support dam out of position, weakening the overall coffer dam.